You are invited to a murder. A stranger lies dead in Arlington Grange. There are six suspects, but which one is the killer? Could it be Mrs. Peacock, lady of the manor and beautiful society hostess? Perhaps Colonel Mustard, military hero and intimate family friend? Is the Reverend Green a saint or a sinner? Is it Professor Plum, a man with a degree of suspicion? Miss Scarlet, Mrs. Peacock's glamorous stepdaughter? Or Mrs. White? loyal housekeeper and devoted confidant. Your host for the new series of Cluedo is Richard Maitley. Welcome back to Arlington Grange. People around these parts are starting to call this place the House of Fun. Well, they will have that little jest, won't they? But there'll be one less joker in the Pack Horse pub tonight because the man who died here today was local. But in which room was he killed? Was it the library? Or the drawing room? Did he meet his god in the kitchen? Or the billiard room? Maybe it all happened in the dining room. Or then again, it could have been here, in the study. Now the murder weapon that killed him is somewhere on this table, one of these six objects. But which was it? Was it this walking stick? Heavy enough to do the job, or this small but bejeweled and sharp dagger. Incongruously, it could have been this, the latest scarf. Or maybe the meat pounder with a metal tip, deadly in the right hands. Maybe it was the champagne bottle, who knows. But most deadly of all on the table, this. Finely polished, finely honed sword. One thing's for sure, one of these things did for Jake Swithin. And the irony of the whole thing is, he thought today was the luckiest day of his life. How do you feel, Jake? Well, I don't rightly know much. How did it happen? Well, I was giving the old plow a bit of throttle and uh, suddenly started chucking up all this gold, you know. I mean, everywhere I look, gold. Must have been buried for years. Any idea where it's from, Jake? My oh. church, eh? The lost artifacts of St. Cecilius. They vanished in the 17th century, and now, by some miracle, they are returned. Brought to light by the hand of God. Or the hand of Jake Swithin, more like. <laughs> dear boy, dear boy. With these relics, St. Cecilia's can be saved. The church needs money. Well, you better have a jumble sale, that much. <laughs> when play the field has scattered all my life, Reverend, I'm reaping the reward now. Bow, boys. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I'm delighted for you, Jake. To think all this time you've been fetching and digging yeah. and doing all those things that handymen do. <laughs> With an expert touch. And now you're richer than any one of us. They're sending a man from Sotheby's. He'll be here at three. Uh, come on through. The mistress is laying on champagne. Oh, huh? mm -hmm. First time you let me in the house proper, isn't it? Yeah. Huh? That's it. They've been sending me your bills again from the village, Mike, mostly from the fox and hounds. This can't go on. Strapped for cash, that's all. Uh, a bit of a disaster abroad. A small military operation. A private affair went sadly wrong. Well, if you can afford to pay your mercenaries, you can afford to pay me. I want the money in full by the end of the week. Chin Chin. Up yours. You're drinking to damnation. I promise you that. Careful, old chap. Thank you. What I don't understand is who removed the treasure from St. Cecilia's in the first place? Oh, I got the answer to that. The Peacock family crest. Yeah, I found it with a treasure. That's the crest of Sir Jasper Peacock, dating from 1642. He must have looted the church. Your ancestor. Fancy that, Mrs. P. You coming from a long line of common thieves, eh? Wonder what your high society mates would have to say about that, eh? But, but if it is true, I'm sure we can rely on your discretion, Jake. I got about as much discretion as a chicken's got teeth. You'd destroy my family name in public, but why? Why not? The peacocks are treating my kind like scum for years. Well, the scum's rising to the top now. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Ruined. Ruined. You were once a 
wonderful in there, <laughs> as always. Yeah, no need to keep things a secret between us now, eh? Not, not now I'm loaded, eh? My hmm? stepmother's furious already. <laughs> when she finds out we've been lovers for six months. Lovers, yeah, lovers in the barn, in the woods. Lovers anywhere. And yeah? everywhere. Except in this house. Ooh. Because eh? that's where the rich folk live, innit, eh? I wasn't good enough for you, was I? Just a bit of rough trade, wasn't I? Let right? me go! With pleasure. No one's gonna touch you now, do you know that? I'll see to that. Especially when they see them home videos we make together. Huh? You're disgusting. You should be hung. Yeah. Well hung. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Peacock, your grasping family started all this 300 years ago. Now, if you won't end it, I will. All my ancestors dishonored. You can't imagine she. I think I can. I fear the plums will be dragged through the gutter once Jake's find is confirmed. Your history of Arlington Grange? Of course. My clever, clever J.K. You say here that the lost treasure was seized by Cromwell, then... And then passed to Chinese warlords in 1799 to be melted down into a golden tusk for the Emperor's pagoda. The critics praised my immaculate research. Ah, I made the whole thing up. Everything? The entire history? Every word. Given a fat fee and a tight deadline, I invented the lot. Now Jake's plowed through my fiction. And I'm finished. My reputation will be torn to shreds. I'll be a laughing stock. I'd sooner end it all than be mocked. <gasps> Professor! There are other ways. Better ways. Any more booze? Oh, Jake, that was awful behaviour in front of the mistress. Was it? Still, it's an emotional day, I suppose. And you know how proud of you I am. Oh. It's no secret. I've always thought of you as my son. Me and Mr. White, we never could have no children. And then you came along. Yeah. And ever since my mam died, mm. you cared for me, you mm. fed me, clothed mm. me, you give me a home. Mm. Do you know why? what? I've been bored rigid. Years and years of listening to your homespun drivel. And now at last I'm rid of you, old oh. woman. Get out my way. Oh, Jake. Such wickedness. <laughs> I was just... I was just looking. You needn't apologize to me. That piece of trash deserves to lose it all. I work for queen and country and end up penniless and some peasant finds a fortune in the field. It's damned unfair. Everything's unfair. You have to make your own justice in this world. But it's his treasure now. He's even been photographed with it. How can I make a claim on any of it? Military man like you, Mike? I'm sure you'll think of something. What is it? What's wrong? Oh, it's Jake. He's dead. He's murdered. So, Jake Swithin unearthed a hoard of treasure and wound up six feet under. All we know for certain is that Jake's killer was armed with one of these six weapons and he was dispatched in one of six rooms in Arlington Grange. And any one of six suspects could have done it. Rejected, her reputation under threat, did hell hath no fury like Miss Scarlet scorned. Penniless Colonel Mustard had a beef with Jake. Maybe he led the lamb to the slaughter. Descended from an ancient line of common crooks, did Mrs. Peacock sign Jake's death warrant to save her family name? Or perhaps the professor plumbed the depths of depravity to preserve his academic reputation? Mrs. White gave a mother's love to Jake, but she received scorn and contempt in return. Did she steal his 